This is Caden Ivy. <laughs> and this lovely person would like to say a few things before we start the fashion. <laughs> system, especially since I'm trying to find what I was going to say, and my phone's telling me, you need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be phone. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Good thing is, I can't actually see you, because we actually have lighting, so I, I don't know who's here. So, hi, guys. <laughs> it's nice to pretend to see you, everyone. I see you guys in the corner, so we're good. Hi, Don. <laughs> um, thank you for joining the Unicorn Tribe and I tonight for a show that has been almost a year and a half in the making. Blood, sweat, tears, and I'm sure half of my hair has gone into making tonight happen. And the support has been absolutely overwhelming. So thank you, and thank you to the tribe if you're listening. Woo! They're probably checking themselves out in the mirror. So that's fine. Um, everybody has put so much hard work into making tonight possible, and I'm so eternally grateful. Um, it's been a very hard road, um, this road not followed. It has been a struggle, it has been a fight, and I made every single piece showcase tonight. Whether it's upcycled from curtains or bed sheets or created from the ground up, this is my vision. Glitter not bitter, making something ugly, hurtful, or painful, um, and making it beautiful. Growing up, I was taught that the word no was a dirty word. It wasn't something I could say to my parents, to my friends, to my sister. It would have been disobedient or unkind. I was taught that violence was never the answer and that my feelings were invalid if they went against somebody else's desire. If someone was annoying me, I was told to ignore it, not tell them to stop, just to ignore it, as if that would magically make it go away. If someone was tickling me and I begged for them to stop, they wouldn't because no matter how hard I screamed no, it didn't matter because everybody else was laughing. It, if I didn't want to hug or to kiss somebody, I'd be forced to do it because that's just what you do. Good girls are supposed to be independent, but not too much. Smart, but not too much. Do what you're supposed to do, even if it doesn't feel right. I was stopped in high school and only tolerated it because no matter how many times I told him to leave me alone, he didn't. People used to tease me and say it was a good thing because I would be the only one who ended up alive when he turned into a serial killer. I don't know how that was supposed to be comforting, but when the school um, had the messages that, I sent, that he sent me telling me that he fantasized about shoving his dick down my throat while he slid it, I was told it was just a misunderstanding and he was misunderstood. When I was sexually assaulted at 15, I didn't fight back because violence is never the answer. I told my teacher and he said to seriously think about what I was saying because that would imply serious consequences for the boy involved. Not me, for him. It would be worse for him. I felt alone, I felt scared, but I also felt nothing, so I cut myself. And it didn't matter because I didn't feel like it was a big deal because I didn't feel like it mattered, like I mattered. I spiraled into this void of self-destructive relationships. I got abused. I got tortured. I was raped. I was a commodity, an object, an ATM. 
I was worn down to the point where it all seemed so normal and it still feels normal. The silence, the constant appeasement, the submission. I couldn't talk, I didn't have to because it wouldn't have mattered if I did anyways. When I first sought out help, I went to the police. They told me they could not protect me unless I was in the hospital because I'd been beaten or if I showed up in a body bag. When I called him again because he followed me home, they told me that he was a very nice man, that I should try and stop contacting him. I called them because he was following me. But somehow it got turned around. Imagine saying, telling somebody who's fearful of their life, I can't help you unless you show up in a body bag. That doesn't necessarily encourage people to ask for help again. When I sought the help of the Avalon Center, I was given a teal I support survivors bracelet. I gave it to my boyfriend at the time, thinking it would be a symbol of him supporting me on my journey the way I had been supporting him. He refused to wear it because he didn't think, want other people to think that something like that had ever happened to him. I was crushed. Did I not matter because it happened to me? Was it too embarrassing if somebody thought that that happened to me? But I don't carry that shame on my shoulder. Yes, I was a victim of sexual assault, abuse, and torture, but that's not who I am. It's never been who I am, and I will not let it define me. Though I've been crippled by depression, anxiety, and PTSD because of it, I am still a fighter. My initial response might not be to fight back. It is to freeze. But I'm still a survivor because I am still here. And the hardest thing I ever learned was just to say no. Tonight, you will see my painful journey towards healing and inspiring others. Tonight, I don't need somebody else to wear a teal bracelet for me because I am strong enough to stand on my own two feet in my own shoes and bear no shame. When I landed in Nova Scotia, I was too afraid to attach my name to any of my work or any of my designs for fear that that could threaten my safety. It has been years now, and I finally worked up the courage to put my own name on the things that I do. The important thing is tonight, you will see a very inspiring herd of unicorns <laughs> whose every single one of them has a beautiful story that will somehow shine through. And I have been blessed with each and every one who has been with me on this journey, who's helped make tonight possible, and who is going to show their love tonight. So thank you, and enjoy. I give you, in my shoes, first category, mental health.
it. <laughs> Would you like to do any thank yous there, my dear? Okay, here you go. Thanks, Rush. Welcome, girl. Everybody for coming. It means a lot that you came out to support me and this beautiful glittering tribe that's literally rolled in glitter. <laughs> despite despite bus stops, no glitter policy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> capturing this moment. Thank you to my mom for flying from Ontario. And, and switching your flight last moment. I'm sorry, I don't control over that again, I'm sorry. Thank you to Hair and Makeup for volunteering your time. beautiful badges of honor that you see some of the models wearing tonight. You just performed your not allowed to hide now you don't have stage fright come up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Things could have gone awkward real fast. <laughs> um, not for us. Oh, thank you John Bob for the wonderful music. I can't see it. Yeah. 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 Ye
one. Thank <laughs> you.